Hey, it's Brian with Team Aquascape, and it's so sunny, I'm actually wearing sunglasses. How cool is that? We got Ed on a dingo, I can see, which looks super awkward, right? Super awkward. He doesn't know how to drive machines. <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ed over at Team Aquascape. I am out at Christ Community Church. Standing out over here because they're just starting excavation. So you can see everything's kind of lined up. They have this big old point over here. The guys are coming in and starting to set up the grades. Basically gonna go down two feet right now at this point. So we're gonna dig everything down to a level of 24 to 28 inches approximately. It's always good to see the first scoops of soil coming out. All right, it's sunny in Chicago. It's kind of a solo mission today. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to expect. We've had it pre-dug. I have no idea what's behind this fence here. I know it got dug, but it's also rained for about three weeks. And so it could be a hole filled with water. It could be dirt put in the wrong location. Don't even know if the hole was dug correctly, but let's find out together. Oh, it's locked. That could be a problem. I wonder how you get in if it's locked. There's our first challenge. Let's see if we can get in in a different direction over here. Here's some access. This one's not locked. Perfect. We're in. Oh my god. Pretty close. Dirt's in the wrong spot, but that's all right. This is going to be our biggest challenge. It's an easy access job because just on the other side of that road, or what appears to be an easy access job because just on the other side of this fence is the road. But they don't want to take this fence down until everything's finished. So we've got to figure out a spot where we can dump our rocks. We'll have the truck come up in through here, come through that gate, dump our rocks in over here, and then get in here and do our thing. Oh, I'm excited. I know it doesn't look like much, but to a pond guy, this is super exciting to me. They actually did a pretty good job digging all this out. So let me go get the paint and then I'm gonna come back and let's talk a little bit about why would a church want to do a recreation pond, especially at their front entrance. Done. <laughs> Finished designing it. That took me about 20 minutes. And I designed the whole thing with this can of marking paint right here. So right over in here, we've got this kind of right angle section right here. Right here, I need more of a formal staircase coming down. So I'm picturing kind of like swimming pool stairs coming down from this angle and this angle, having some railings come down on this side and this side. The whole purpose for this staircase is for the kids to be able to get in here in a nice, easy way. Um, also they're gonna start doing some baptisms and stuff in here. These giant octagonal type shapes I have down in the bottom here is gonna be more of a huge flagstone bottom here. I want you to be able to come down, sit on the rock, and use the pond in this shallow area. It'll be about two feet deep over in here. So a big flagstone bottom here. Over in this area, where it's kind of painted out like so, is gonna be the deeper spot, getting down into about four feet of water in there. They really don't need it any deeper than that. They're gonna use it for snorkeling, they're gonna use it for exploring, doing outdoor classes, water chemistry, frogs, tadpoles, dragonflies, that kind of stuff. So depth is an important, and we don't want it six, seven feet deep because we don't want to promote people <laughs> jumping off into deep water on this particular recreation pond. Over in here, this whole pond is going to overflow through a waterfall facing the main street as they come up, and it'll be a small fall, not really big, but big enough that they can see a little bit something. This will be the rainwater harvesting area in here. This big area right in here is going to be the rough shape of the bog filter as it fills up and then overflows going into the pond over in here. That flag right there is going to be the main waterfall at about three feet high, again facing the road. So as everybody comes in, they see this fall first, then they see that big, big waterfall off in the distance. And then this line here represents roughly the space that the berm is going to take up from that waterfall. Berms are everything with making a waterfall look natural. And even at that height, about 15, 18 feet away, this feels a little too steep so I'm picturing some big boulders sitting in here holding back this dirt the coolest thing about this dotted line or eventually these big boulders is it's gonna outline the pathway that leads me to the bridge that takes us over the little pool with that big three-foot waterfall so with a can of marking paint in about 15 20 minutes I was able to lay all of this out and I think represent a much more defined and definite plan of attack than any drawing ever could. Machines should be here soon. Our next plan is to finish reshaping, digging out our deep area, fixing up all the edges. Then we want to get the liner in and start rocking this thing in. We got Ed on a dingo, I can see. You got Mark down in here in the bottom, digging out the deep parts. Say hey, AJ. Hey. <laughs> Let's get Ed off that dingo and uh, see what he has to say. What's up? 
up. Say hi. Hey, hi. good. So what are the elevations? The bottom is two foot four inches. We might need to dig this shelf down deeper. Probably a little bit. Because what's gonna happen is we've got formal stairs coming in here, yep. and then they wanna do like some baptisms and stuff, so like over here. Unless we wanna change this grade, we got a massive pile of soil, so we could go off of that elevation, we could build everything up. Now Ed and I have to talk offline. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> First load of rocks are here. Excavation is being finished as we speak. This is all the pile of original rock that we had out here. This is all quartzite. This was installed many, many years ago. So that got all removed. Now we're getting it blown out to a massive recreation pond, which is going in over there. Brian's talking with our delivery driver and our plan is to bring in those stones as close as possible to the final destination. It's always exciting. The first load of stone is coming in, coming directly from the stone quarry. All right, Brian, what do you think of the rock? I was actually super nervous because we don't like we're so used to hand picking them. Yeah. And so when you order something, you don't get to see it. I told Joel I wanted anything from 24 to 42, and those are definitely the 42 ones. Those so are I'm beauties. Super, super, <laughs> yeah, they look I'm awesome. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> Now we're making progress. Two machines going. It's great to have the right equipment. We got our 308. We got the 303 for some fine tuning some of the stuff, but it makes real quick work of this. We're bringing it down to the appropriate elevation. This is gonna be where those stairs are gonna come in. We're gonna have a deep hole over in this section. The majority of this will be about three, a little over three feet deep. That hole is five feet deep over on that side over there. Today, goal, get the excavation fine tuned, fabric, liner, and hopefully, if all goes well, we will get some boulders in here. All right, excavation is complete. Next step to drop in our geotextile fabric. We're gonna do our heavy duty fabric underneath and that's because we're putting in giant boulders. Uh, we want ultimate protection and we're gonna put in our rubber liner on top of that and then another layer of the heavy duty geotextile on top of that. That'll help spread out the weight. That'll make it nice and safe. We could drop in all of our big boulders without any problem. We're gonna have a series of stairs coming down over here. We have our deep section in this area. We're also gonna be using our new stack slate walls to kind of create a deep kind of a well looking area over here which look really really cool Liners in. It's always a good feeling. Get that liner in place. We got our first boulder coming in. That's also a big milestone. So what we're doing, we have our heavy duty fabric underneath, EPDM rubber liner on top. This is a bomb proof installation method. Whenever we're setting boulders like this, these aren't even that big, but average rock is gonna be 3,000 pounds. We wanna make sure that everything's uh, nice and protected. There's gonna be kids in here. So that's why we're going with that extra protection over the top of it. And we actually have another roll coming out. I don't have it with me right now it's being delivered we're going to go the entire thing we want to try to get a couple of these big boulders set in just because it's a big psychological win get the liner in place fabric and start setting some rocks that is a big win for the day boom huh oh my god what 22 tons of granite boulders sounds like coming out of a truck <laughs> The sounds of angels. <laughs> there you go. Pretty cool. Hey, good morning. This is Ed over at Team Aquascape. We are back out at Christ Community Church. We're right in the process of setting some big boulders. We have a potential for some thunderstorms coming in a little bit later in the day, so we want to try to get as much stuff done today as we can. Dropping in a couple of these massive granite boulders. I love these rocks. Rubber liner in place. We covered everything up. Every square inch is covered with heavy-duty geotextile fabric. This is our heavy-duty rock pad. I came in uh, with my heat gun, and I was tack welding the heavy-duty fabric. 
fabric. So what that does is it makes it one big continuous sheet. It keeps those little edges from blowing in the air and moving around on us. So what we're trying to do is we're coming in with a lot of these big peninsula rocks right now. We have a massive one up here, probably between four or 5,000 pounds. It's gonna go right here on this peninsula. It's a little bit overkill, but we got some beautiful stones. So I wanna try to break things up. We're gonna drop this guy right over here. All right, Mark, bring it in. Standing back while he positions himself. So I'm good in a safe distance over here. So he's gonna get it out closer. And then once it gets close to the ground, then I will move in for final positioning. All right, so get a little bit closer to the ground and now it's safe if anything were to happen. If the strap breaks, the machine tips, it's only gonna drop down a foot. So I'm gonna put that rock in position and we are gonna keep moving. Our next step, we're gonna fill in some of these little gaps over in here with some smaller chunks of stone. And we're gonna try to set up some of our uh, stack slate walls down in that bottom section, kind of have a little bit different look. Uh, AJ's got the uh, stack slate walls right now over here. He's loading them up. We're gonna start unboxing them and getting them ready for installation. the stuff that uh, I was talking about. We have bad weather coming in. Mark, uh, it's actually just started drizzling. Big six inch uh, downspout over here. Caused a big, big problem. We're gonna make a little trench going over to that catch basin so it doesn't flood stuff out. AJ's cleaning stuff up. Getting dark. Ryan is not happy. Oh, happy. <laughs> the walls are looking cool. Rocks are looking good. That's our problem. It could be nasty. All right, just enough rain to make a mess. Thankfully, it didn't get all this stuff washed out, but that's what just left us. So thankfully, that's gone. Dumped a bunch of rain down in here, but not too bad. So it's still workable. So we're going to hop in, trying to keep going here. Um, you can see our little diversion drain over there seemed to work pretty well. Overflowed down into that drainage pipe. Now we just got to make the best of the day here. We continue to slop around here in the muck in the mud, as usual. It's been par for the course the entire spring. Boulders are looking good. Got some awesome, awesome pieces coming from Illinois Brick. They rerouted them from the quarry directly to us, so to minimize some of the handling, which worked out pretty well, but just dropping in these massive boulders. Stack slate walls going in. They are uh, bolted together. Fill them all with river rock. Give them some little stabilization. Lock them all in place. The nice thing about the shape of these things is when we start backfilling around them, it's really going to put them under compression so it's going to be nice and solid. These are going to kind of terminate into some boulders so we will have a little bit of a pushing action over in here but it should lock itself in into all those corners. The main steps coming in from over here are going to come down from the walkways and everything down into the bottom. It's going to be flagstone down here on the bottom. That's where they're going to be doing baptisms so this will be really really cool. It's going to be a nice interactive pond over here. All right so this is the how many times AJ for this rock? Four. <laughs> Fourth time for this big old rock. This whole edge collapsed on us. It pushed into these walls, caused all types of problems. So hopefully this will be the last time, but it's a big rock. That's the biggest one we have, right? At least two and a half tons, at least. So we had to stabilize all of this stuff. We'll still have to get some little chunks down in here. All right, we're gonna drop that in position. <laughs> 